Okay. Multiplying and dividing rational expressions. Um, so if you have things like 15 over 65, I can break it down to 3 times 5, 13 times 5, and cross out. So if you have something like 4 over x plus 3, or 4 times x plus 3 over x minus 5, x plus 3, I cross out the like terms x plus 3, x plus 3, I get 4 over x minus 5. So how do I simplify this? Uh, x squared and x squared. Nope. You have to do what? You have to factor. What multiplies to give me negative 15 and adds to give me negative 2? 5 and 5. Negative 5. 3, negative 3 and negative 5. Negative 5. Negative 5. Positive 3. How does x squared minus 9 factor out? It's minus 3. It's minus 3. Negative 3 minus 9. X plus 3. These cancel. And I get x minus 5 over x minus 3. That is my simplified answer. Okay? That's it for now. Okay. You are a company. A company makes a tin that holds flavored popcorn. The tin is a rectangular prism with a square base. The company is designing a new tin with the same base and twice the height as the old tin. Find the surface area and the volume of each tin. How do you find the surface area of something? Base times height times length. Um, yes, base times height times length. So if I have base times height times length, what's the surface area of that old tin, the smaller one? S, S, B, or S squared, each. Result the same rate. What? That is volume, length times width times height. What, uh, yes, yeah, you're right. I'm asking surface area first. What's surface area? Well, you could do length times height. height. The surface area means, how do you find the area of something? What? Length times width. What shape do I have here? What do I have here? So I have 2 times S squared as that area, as that surface, part of that surface area. How many sides do I have? Four. If I have plus four, and what are my sides length and width? Mm -hmm. I'm going to say yes. That's how I find the surface area. You add up all the areas of everything that's on the surface. Volume, you said was what? Like times width times height. So S squared H. Okay, that's the old. The new 10. What is my surface area? Two S squared. Two S squared plus four times S two H. So eight S H. And what is my volume? Yeah, so I'm gonna say two S squared H just so that's in front. Okay, that's part the first part. Then it says calculate the ratio of the surface area to volume for each tin. How do I calculate a ratio of surface area to volume? You put them over each other. So this one is 2s squared plus 4sh over s squared h. Okay, what can I do from there? What can I factor? Take out a 1s. A 2s. Take out a 2s. So you get 2s over here, right? Mm -hmm. And you get s plus 2h mm -hmm. over s squared h. Now what can I do? Yeah, I'm confused. I, Maddie, I took out the 2s from this segment out here. I factored out 2s. So if I take a 2s out from there, I have s left. If I take a 2s out from here, I have 2h left. Okay, what? What do I do now? Yeah. I can cross out one of these S's, right? Mm -hmm. So that you have 2S plus 2H over SH. Okay. Now over here, I have to set up the same thing, right? 2S squared plus 8SH over 2S squared H. Now what do I do up top? I got a 2S 
We're left with S plus 4H, yeah? Take out A, and then down here I still have 2, S squared H. What can I do down there? Take out a 2, yeah, I can cross off the 2 and one of the S's. So I have S plus 4H up top over SH. Okay. And here I have um, this as my simplified form. Now, which one saves the um, company money? Creating the new tin or the old tin? Or matters how much you're going to charge. Mm, charging the same. Which one? Well, that's stupid. The old one? Why do you say the old one? It looks smaller, yes. Look, this appears to be smaller than that. This surface area is less than that surface area. Because if I factored this 2 back in, you would have 2s plus 4h over sh. You have double the side lengths as you do here. So wouldn't have more to do with volume than surface area? Because it's really The volume's the same. The volume is the bottom part, the sh. It fills the volumes of these two containers. These two containers can hold the same volume of, of popcorn. The problem is the first container, the old one, costs more to produce because of how much surface area you have to use. Like this. McDonald's has a large cup, cup for tea and soft drink, yes? And it has a small cup. Did you know that the large cup holds the same amount of liquid as the small cup? No. Huh? Mm -hmm. How? Try it one day. Because here's why. When you are dealing with items that hold a volume, if the height of those two items are congruent, are equal, okay, which they are on a small McDonald's cup and a large McDonald's cup, the heights are equal, yeah? Yeah. Okay. When they are equal, and then the area called, so if I have a cup, okay, like this, this area, if I cut a cross section through it, it creates a circle right there, yes? Mm -hmm. Okay. This circle's area, if it's the same as the area on the large cup and the heights are the same, they hold the same volume. So what happens is McDonald's says, here's our large cup and it looks larger to your eyes, but do you know how the bottom gets really skinny? Mm -hmm. It takes away part of the, the, the volume. So it's but it's actually the same. It's just proportioned differently than what your, and so your eyes see it as being larger, but it's really not. FYI. So in a state like Ohio, when every drink is a dollar, it doesn't matter which one I order. But in a state like Washington, when the drinks are not all just a dollar, it matters which one you order. You went to Washington? State? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, but so those are like things that you need to realize that they do to you as a consumer and actually make more money off of you without giving you more product. Well, you know what? I'm going to get a large reward. I'm going to be like, okay. Then we're going to work on breaking stuff down when there's x and y's in it. Like this says 5x squared over 2xy squared times 6xy cubed over 10y. They combined it. I don't combine it. I break it down from the beginning, so I save myself a step. I do something like this. I say, oh, 2 can go into 6 3 times, right? So up top, I have 5 and I have 3. 5 and 10 go into each other. That changes that number. So up top, I have a 3. I have 2 x's and an x. That's 3 x's. On bottom, I have 1. So I'm left with x squared. Up top, I have y cubed. On the bottom, I have y squared and y. So I just have a 2 left over. Yeah. So we're going to, the rest of these six slides are just a bunch of examples. How do I solve this? What do you want to do first? <coughs> Simplify. Okay. Eight breaks down into what? Four. Okay, so eight is going to be two. Two, two times, times four. X cubed Y over two X Y squared, right? Yeah. Times yeah. seven, because that doesn't break down. X to the fourth Y cubed over, and I don't need to break four down because there's a four there. Okay. Can't choose cancel out someplace. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Four. Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. 
I have how many X's up top? Three. No. no. Three and seven. 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 How many do I have below? One. One. So how many do I have left? Six. Six, Six. Up, top. up top. I'm going to also bring this seven over because there's nothing seven. I can do with that. Okay. And then I have how many Y's up top? Four. Four Y's, three on bottom, so this, this, this. So you get this. Oh, so that's my. Yes. Easy, easy. Okay, how do I do this one? Start with this. Factor what I can out of it. What do you factor out of it? Three X. Three X. And then you're left with one minus X, yes? On bottom, what multiplies to give me negative five and adds to give me four? Multiplies to give me negative five, adds to give me four. Negative five and negative five. Or one. Negative one and positive five. Negative one and positive five. Up top, what multiplies to give me negative 20, adds to give me one? What can I cancel out? 3x. 3x, what else? 1. x plus 5? 1x. Nope. This says 1 minus x. This says x minus 1. If I want to cancel that out, I can, but I have to do something first. No. I need to factor out a negative 1 from here. If I factor out a negative 1 from here, you get um, x minus 1 now. So that cancels. Now I have negative 1 times x minus 4, which gives me what? X plus negative x plus 4. Yep, and that's your simplified answer. Okay. Okay, I have a question. Yes. Yeah. Not specifically to this, but like to the left. If When you do this, what's the point of having the simplified answer? Because they just want you to break it down as far as you know. There is no solution because there's no set equal to zero. Eventually, we'll get to where these are set equal to each other and we're breaking I just mean eventually, like, are you able to get more, more like, the answers from the simplified answer? Yes. If we know other facts, we can work backwards. Okay. But you have to know more than just that simplified answer. Okay. okay. How do I simplify this? This doesn't change. X plus 2. Right. Yeah. Hey, X cubed minus 27. How do I factor that? X to the negative minus 3. X minus 3, and then what? This is one of those special factors that you have to memorize. And it's going to make a big one. Oh, and then X squared. And then, oh, this one. Minus 7. No, not 9. 3. 3 what? 3X. 3X. 9. This part is, this part here is the cube of that, the cube of that. This is this squared. This is these two multiplied together, and this is that squared. Now, you have it this. What happens? Uh, the x squared cancel. And you're left with what? X plus 2 over x minus 3. Okay, now this is basically telling us, hey, we can also do this with division. With division and fractions, what do you have to do? Always flip, flip and multiply. So we're doing the same thing, but we have to flip it. Okay, flip it. Okay, let's, let's flip and let's factor at the same time. This stays the same, right? 7x. What happens down here? Um, take a 2 out, good Tyler, and I get x minus 5. Now, I'm flipping and I'm breaking it apart. So let's focus on this because it goes up top, right? What multiplies to give me 30 adds to give me negative 11? Negative 5 and negative 6. Negative 5, negative 6. On the bottom, what happens? Okay, now 
Alright, what do I do? Cross the x minus x out. Okay, what else? X minus five. Out. What else? Nope. You take oh, an X. And you did. Seven over two, which is really simplified. Yeah. That's simplified. That's all you gotta do. Cool. Okay, one more. What do I do here? Up top, let's factor that first. The lead coefficient's no longer one. Six. Yep, so a multiplies to give me negative 15 and adds to give me one with a leading coefficient of six. You, you need more than just, it could be three and two, but what does three and two go with? Remember, six is one and six, three and two, 15 is what? One and 15, three and five. How can I get to negative 15 and get to one there? Can one and six combine with one and 15 in any way oh. to get you there? No. no. Can one and six and three and five combine in any way to get you a one here? No. no. Can three and two and one and 15? How about three and two and three and five? Yeah. How? I don't know, but we have them in either direction. So we have a three X, we have a two X, and we need a five and a three in those spots, and we need one to be negative and one to be positive. Plus three. You said plus three minus five? Mm. So five times three would give me negative 15, and three times two gives me six. Does negative 15 and six get me to one? Mm. Nope. Flip it. So put five here, and put three here. Three times three is? Nine, five times two is 10. What's positive, what's negative? Because 10 and nine can get me to one. Minus three. Minus three plus five. Over four x squared. Now, what do we have to do with this part here? One over three. Oh, uh, yeah, one over, and what are you factoring now? How about an x because you can't factor out a 3 for 3 and 5. And you get 3 and x plus 5. Now what? Stop. Cross out 3x plus 5. Okay. So up top, no you can't cross out an x. That's together. So up top you have 2x minus 3. On bottom you have 4x cubed. Homework is on the board. Get busy. I'll pass back your test.